Hello, 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 beautiful people. This is a very quick and short one. See, attorneys are weak. Attorneys are not as smart. Attorneys are not as effective as most people think. Now, don't get me wrong. If you need to partner up or use an attorney based on certain things, and you control the language of that engagement based on the contract, then sure. But for the most part, whenever you bring a claim, after you've gotten rid of a case brought against you and you seek restitution or you quickly did a counterclaim within the 90 day or 120 day period that a counterclaim can be done on a federal level. And by the way, you can do counterclaims on a state level also, but the federal level is the easier one to do. But nonetheless, whatever it is that you're doing to avail yourself of anything, attorneys will always be there. And there's one very common and very simple thing that attorneys do very, very frequently. And that is this right here. They will cite case laws. They will cite case laws after case laws after case laws. In the past, we went over judicial notice. There's a reason why we went over it generally first to show what it applies to. Now, we showed it as to how you can use it and why you will be using it a certain way. But since Lady Justice has a double edged sword, this is also one of the reasons why you will kill an attorney's claim. See, all an attorney has and can ever do in any given court related matter is to give suggestions. And suggestions hold no ground. This is the reason why all an attorney has the power to do is merely give suggestions. Despite their prestige of being an officer of the court, for this thing called judicial notice, every time an attorney comes in, and they start speaking like this and they try to back their words up using case laws did you know that these case laws are actually not admissible besides the fact that they're not putting a certified copy of the order that shows a proof that what they're saying is not some BS here's why here's why an attorney has no standing see Trinsley versus Pagliaro can only be triggered if you know what I'm about to tell you what we're about to talk about here shortly and briefly it's the core of why Trinity versus Pagliaro, statement of counsel, whether in brief or oral argument, is insufficient for summary judgment, which summary judgment and motion to dismiss will go hand in hand when they try to kill your claim, whether you're right or wrong, whether you have a great weight of proof that you've shown or not. This is the reason why the trash that attorney says is dead. Scope. We've read this in the past, so go watch that video regarding judicial notices. This rule governs judicial notice of an adjudicated fact only, not legislative fact. Within that video, we'll define what legislative fact is compared to adjudicated fact. Do you know what case laws are? Case laws are legislative facts. Case laws, legislative, then law. Case laws are judge-made law, which are legislative fact. And the scope, meaning the confines, the box, the fixed, limited algorithm to which the acting judge can take notice of anything, hence judicial notice. It's strictly based on adjudicated fact, which is the instant matter, and not legislative fact. So whenever attorneys come in and start citing case laws, aka legislative facts, did you know that an acting judge cannot even and should not and are not meant to be able to see it? So now, if all that an attorney does, 50% of everything that they're saying is fettered upon some case laws, most of the time, that's exactly what it is. An acting judge cannot even see it. It cannot be in the eyes of an acting judge. That means automatically the case is in your favor. But most people don't even know this. So then it is encumbered upon you within your motion opposition or affidavit opposition that you're going to bring in to make one of the primary claims or to put in your judicial notice to that acting judge that that acting judge can never take judicial notice to everything the attorney has said because the attorneys bring in legislative fact because based on the rules that govern judicial notice which is the scope to which the acting judge can see notices or be notified of the instant matter is limited to adjudicative fact which is the stuff specific to the matter rather than legislative fact therefore all that is left in the equation when it comes to the, the validity of that attorney and what they're saying is a mere suggestion a mere suggestion has no probative value of substantive fact or evidence that backs it up. Thus, it doesn't qualify as a hearsay exception. And 
and its barriers. There's a video we did in the past regarding sanctions during the early stages of Patreon regarding sanctions. That is when you are able to then use this claim. The fact that they're bringing in legislative facts in conjunction with sanctioning them, which will deter them from even talking smack or trash, which will quicken the case in your remedy. And then add that to the federal rules of evidence relating to irrelevance and repetitive claims. Right here, rule 402, irrelevant evidence is not admissible. When they start to bring in legislative facts by citing case laws, which they say is the reason why I can come in and say this. Remember, they have no first-hand knowledge, right? But that's not the end. Not merely having first-hand knowledge and experience is not enough because even if you don't have first-hand knowledge and experience, it can still fall under exceptions and exclusions under hearsay, meaning it can still be admitted even if it's a third party statement like an attorney's. But the core of Trinsley versus Pagliari as to how and why it can work is because they always cite legislative facts, aka judge made law, case laws, and all their paperwork. And the fact that legislative fact is not part of the scope to which the acting judge can notice or take judicial notice of, many in order for the acting judge to come to a conclusion as a reasonable fact finder. Because they cannot take notice of the legislative fact, it's just a waste of the court's time and a waste of the court's resource. It's a waste of your time and your resource. Literally, these are the exact verbiage that you put on pen and paper. This is what I do. This is how I win most of my cases, plaintiff or defendant. And then it is irrelevant by virtue of the same. So if they're saying something that cannot be judicially noticed, meaning they're wasting time, resource, that means it's irrelevant information and it's not admissible according to rule 402 and guess what 403 the court may exclude relevant evidence if its probative value is substantially outweighed by a danger of one or more of the following they can exclude relevant evidence meaning if they say oh yeah you shot this guy and look here's an image of you shooting him but at the end they come up with a bunch of rest of the carters along with their claim with it we can actually kill all that, meaning they did in fact bring relevant evidence in. And guess what? You can exclude, remove that relevant evidence based on the fact that the acting judge cannot take judicial notice since they're back in their claim that they say, they're saying you did something. It doesn't have to be severe as a capital crime. But if they're saying we got the evidence, but look, in addition to the evidence, here's a case law, aka a legislative fact that the acting judge cannot judicially notice. You can actually exclude their relevant evidence against you. According to 403, a court may exclude relevant evidence if its probative value is substantially outweighed by a danger of one or more of the following. On fear of prejudice, confusing the issue, misleading the jury, on due delay, wasting time, or needless presenting cumulative evidence. And then character evidence we went over on YouTube. You should really watch that video. Because it goes into a very, very, very great detail of how an Enzligas is a character that they're bringing against you. But then other videos here on Patreon regarding the use of DVA and court-related stuff also goes into this in a more functional manner. But nonetheless, just know that according to the just judicial notice, which interesting enough, 403 and 402 is just a page away from it. These people organize these documents in a specific way because they're telling you these things are meant to go along with these other things. They're not stupid. They didn't skip all the way magically from 201 and went to 301. They didn't skip all the way from 201 all the way to 300, suddenly to rule 301. And then they skip 303 all the way to what is relevant as an evidence to 401. They didn't do that by an accident. See, these other rules that they skip is in books that you have to buy that cost 3000 4000 bucks. But the one that they made publicly available, they give you enough to fix your issue. And they put it in a simplified manner for the mind that a dummy can even realize. But the problem is most people don't even read this. But your solution is right here. Everything you need is right here. The scope that an acting judge can ever take notice of to make a determination as a middle party, as a third party, as a reasonable fact finder in any case, unless you've accepted their oath, which triggers 
them to be a middle third party. Outside of that, they're just an attorney helping their buddy from their Masonic Hall. Once you accept that oath of office, you effectively made them a neutral third party. That's on a website. And once that's in the, but nonetheless, the only thing that they can take notice of to even determine what's going on has a scope, a box, a fixed algorithm. And they can only take judicial notice of adjudicated fact, which we've went over in the video regarding judicial notice. So go watch that. And not legislative fact. Legislative fact are rest of the cottage. So now every time an attorney comes in, you're going to see them cite case law. So much so that at the beginning of their paper, they will have a table of content. And all you see is just case law after case law after case law. You almost want to slap them in the face because if they knew, they wouldn't be doing that. They're self-confessing that the acting judge can't take judicial notice. But they also know that most people who they're doing this against. Let me show you an example of, of what they do. This crap right here. Literally, they would structure their document and put table of authority or table of content. They would literally list legislative fact after legislative fact after legislative fact. Meaning, look, I am organized. I went to a prestigious Ivy League. My parents groomed me and I learned how to write essays. Now I was told I have this LexisNexis system whereby I can just type in a keyword and it would just give me a summary of case laws related to what I want to quote, argue, which by the way, they have another specific section called argument, literally. And I'll just copy and paste that and put it on my paper, even if I don't know if it applies or not. In their mind, they're thinking, well, me as an attorney, I know you don't know anything about one, how evidence is admitted, and the fact that the acting judge cannot even take notice of this because this is all legislative fact. So I'll just list it anyway. And two, I know that you don't know that I don't even know the details of all this. But I'm just going to list it anyway and just pick and choose quotes that fit me, even though the quote is not specific to your circumstance. Whereas an acting judge can only take judicial notice of things specific to your circumstance and not a legislative fact, which legislative fact, again, again, was clarified in the previous video regarding judicial notice. Legislative fact is not anything from the Congress. When it comes to the, any court system, public or private, legislative fact is judge-made law, which is rest of the cottage, their decisions. And guess what? Look, they would they throw it in your face. This is an admissible evidence against them that what they're saying cannot be noticed or put into consideration by the acting judge. That is one of the trash that you'll be talking against them to kill any of their claims. No matter how firm it is against you, not that we're condoning doing ridiculous things here. You shouldn't. In fact, if you did something wrong, you probably deserve it. We're not here to cheat, lie, steal, or take shortcuts. But nonetheless, you know, change of mind occurs. People make mistakes. The circumstance might be motivated by the need for survival. Literally, most people out here live in survival mode. But nonetheless, in case you had to change your mind, here's your solution. All what an attorney can ever say is based on a mere suggestion because based on what an acting judge can ever take notice of, they can't even take notice of all these case laws that attorneys use. Did you know that? If you didn't, well, now you do. Put the information to use. Take care. Best of luck. Hey, beautiful people. I'm inviting you to come to my Patreon page to speak about everything we don't speak of here on YouTube. On the patron page we speak of establishing privacy in many different means how to hold tort fees liable the different types of discharge and the steps to actually do it now I'll be showing my own proof of the success the intricacies evolved and why and how it works and the things no one else would tell you because they've never discharged themselves the intricacies of sediments suing people and many other basic things like other tools that you can use privately things of spiritual nature because this goes beyond what you observe with your five senses and if you just want to limit your remedy to just what you observe with your five senses think again because the other side is not playing in that realm it's not an even playing field other things like study tools are shown things regarding trust and asset protection and how to lay your trust properly the way people seek it an advantage of how to do it, banking, the functionality of how they function, and the validity of it that a lot of people misuse or are misled by.
where they think, oh, these other guys are bad, so now I have to just go into argument mode. No, you don't always have to argue. The law is perfected for your benefit if you're competent about it. Many things regarding child support. Different, different examples of settlement checks and the videos on it. A different aspect of how you can broaden your mind internationally beyond the little chicken scraps that people are picking up when it comes to passport and things of that nature. How banking works, how property protection works. The details of copyright, tort, privacy, different types of trust, the intricacies, and exactly why and how they are done. The intricacies that people from other parts of the world know about trust that you don't. Just because you read something on social media and whatnot doesn't mean you really got it. The intricacies of how to use certain jurisdiction and the stuff everyone speaks of. More in child support, more in trust, more in court. More on spiritual nature of things, etc., etc. The fact that tax avoidance is different from tax evasion. The importance of things in commerce and how to actually function in commerce. How to actually really do things as a natural person is beyond speculation. But let me give you this caveat. If you're looking for a cookie cutter or some quick fast food weight, this is not it for you. Either here on YouTube or on Patreon. But if you're serious about your education and the function and application of it, rather than a mere accumulation of information, then come on over on Patreon. There are things we speak about over there that are universally and exponentially beneficial compared to that of the ones we speak of on YouTube. And more importantly, the practicality and the actual use of it. Take care. Best of luck.